Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome in, welcome in. Welcome, welcome back, back to, to Do It For The Story. Do It For The Story. I'm Morgan. I'm Stacy, And we are joined today to hear by two guests, uh, our parents. Do you want to give a hi, at least. quick intro? Say hello. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Richard Williams. Go ahead, Joni. Let's just... <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. I am Joan Williams. I am the mother of these two beautiful girls Love that. or ladies. Love that. Well, as the and I actually can't say diffs, two. When I have five. Tradition. We'll do it. Cheers. 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 Diffs. Cheers. Diffs. Davis. 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 Thanks for Cheers. joining us. Welcome in. Welcome in. Thanks for Welcome having us. We're appreciative. Yeah. Thanks Thank for you. joining. You all also um, those who are watching. You'll know notice we should mention our backgrounds a little different. This is real. We are down so in um, the Outer Banks, down in Avon, Hatteras area. Cape Hatteras. Yeah. So Hat thank you, Mom is... and Dad, for a fun little vacation. Yeah. Hat down, yeah, as Angel you. calls it. Yeah. You're We've welcome. been having an awesome week. We're here. Well, when you listen to this, obviously the date will change, but we're here. We've been here for Father's Day. Yesterday was Juneteenth. It was my birthday last week. Happy Joe birthday. Donahue's. Thank you. Week Couple before. Weeks ago. What else do we have going? Oh, um, we had Loving Day on the 12th. So June, we got a lot going on. We had a lot going on and we like to kick off vacation season and summer with a little trip down to Hatteras and a little celebration of Father's Day and Juneteenth. It's become a little bit of a tradition. But my first year. So. Stacey's first year, but we convinced. And, ceases. and I think you're coming back. Are you not? I'm, I'm in to come back. Yeah, and hopefully everybody, we are missing Mimi and Meta, and we're missing... My, number one fan. Number one fan, Miles and Kiki and Little Diva. Little Diva. But next time. We hard miss to you. get all we of us in you. one spot, but next time, um, hopefully everyone will be able to make it. Yeah, we'll kick it off. So, um, other than just enjoying the week, you know, we've been down here doing a lot of Water sports, having some fun, paddle boarding, fishing, the kids are doing their thing, whatever, lounging, reading, a lot of cooking. A lot of play. Go back and listen to the episode. Yeah, go back and listen. To play. And we thought, what a, a better time play. to sit down and interview mom and dad since we had a lot of, we had a lot of requests. requests. Everybody's saying that's what they want. We're well, like, tell us in the DMs who you want to hear, what do you want to hear about? And we keep getting a lot of, you got your parents on. Well, and why was that? Because our first episode, Racists and Bigots, You Can't Sit With Us, that's still that really affirmative. Sparked really sparked it. Um, and folks that don't know our parents, but also folks that know our parents were asking, uh, well, we want to hear from them. Like, what was it like? Uh, and how well, do you raising parent? five daughters yeah. what was it like you know raising five daughters in the 80s in a small town all of the things but also people really just want to know they're like oh my god this is before internet and you guys were right. like just parenting, parenting and i general. think too some people don't really know you guys that were commenting you know friends of ours yes. from like career Work. time yeah. and college know you but not really well weren't around you in terms of that like parenting nurturing way like at our house like high school style I think the the friends of ours who know you from childhood high school they they get it and know too that our house was always this like crazy environment crazy meaning good of welcoming, welcoming and acceptance and non-judgmental yeah so yeah before we get into all that want to give the fans the listeners a little background so if we could just kind of start with getting to know you tell um, us a little bit about Joni and Rich yeah so that. I guess just to start before <laughs> Joni and Rich though like mom right. we'll start with you since we'll just go in the order of where we're sitting um so tell us where did you grow up well my father was in the military as you know grandpa and so oh my goodness get it's okay. emotional it's okay um we love getting emotional on the pod. Yes. Uh, grandma was this very uh, warrior type mother. She uh, had ju juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and she was very young. And so being in the military, as she always liked to say, is, you know, they always said grandpa was in the military, but she always said I was in the military. Mm -hmm. So we had to celebrate Memorial Day and Veterans Day. It was all not just for Grandpa, but for Grandma, too. Very important point. And um, she, we, I was born in Turkey, 
And so we, they traveled. Dad, Grandpa was already in Turkey. He had broken his neck in a Jeep accident, so he had to uh, be there longer. My mom was at home with two children. Because the Jeep accident was in... Was in Turkey, but he got shipped to Wiesbaden, Germany, to be in traction for three months. And well, what is, and sorry, just what does traction mean? Traction meant that he had uh, four holes bored into his head and hooked up to um, a, halo. a halo so that the traction, he would let be laying flat and then the traction would hold his head still with weights. The halo, the traction when he was laying flat would hold his head still. And he was in a flat uh, cot type thing for the three months. And every hour or two, they would come in and flip the bed and so that he would be on the other side. So, not to interrupt, so while he was in traction, this was, you were born at this point? I was not born at this not point. Not born at this point. No. My sister, my brother was uh, about three, and um, my sister was maybe a year, almost two, mm-hmm. year and a half, almost two. And they were at home, but they were set to go to Turkey. And of course, my my grandfather, my mother's mother, father and mother, did not want my mother to go to Turkey because at that time there was no military bases. It was all top secret, in quotes, and there was no support from the local, very little support yeah, from the local military. It wasn't like, there mm, was an embassy. There was. Yes. Um, but I don't even know if there was an I was I was I baptized in the Italian. Italian embassy, so I don't even know. Maybe there wasn't an American embassy. You're probably right. And I was born in a Turkish hospital after. But anyway, so mom and dad, mom traveled, and it was to Turkey on her own with these two children, pre, um, uh, if you will, social media any and kind of any kind of technology. No phones, in no fact, phones. Dr- uh, cloth diapers, rubber pants, had to carry your own uh, inf- infant. Formula. Food, formula, and um, jars of baby food and all of that. And my, my, my mom's story was always cute. She had, the, had run out. She had to buy more, and she had it in a paper bag, and it tore, and all the jars of baby food went rolling oh, down the airport. And my mom is just, like, trying to hold my sister back, and my brother is loving the planes, and it was just quite an adventure for sure. For a single working mom at that time, not working, but I mean, who was probably how old? Taking care. Uh, 23, maybe 24. Mm. I was born at 25. She was 25. Mm. And uh, then the plane, she, it it was really almost a two week trip for her to get to Turkey. Just to get there. From New York. Because at different times, the plane wasn't there to connect. They had to spend the night in a hotel, and the hotel had to wake them up, and the hotel didn't wake them up, and then you'd miss the plane. It was just crazy stories. Anyway, came from a very strong woman background. And Grandpa was in Turkey then, came to Turkey. He was very concerned that my sister wouldn't recognize him because he then had a halo... uh, uh, neck brace and he was so scared that my sister wouldn't and she just ran to him and <laughs> held on to that neck brace and, <sighs> and my mom loved to tell the story that she wouldn't tell grandpa that she would do that to anybody <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter who it was she would have run over there to him but anyway so then we were there and I was born and I was only there for about six weeks but it was always um, the stories of hearing those stories and, and learning about where my mom lived, and they stayed in touch with the people that we lived with. Uh, Guzine and Ahmed and, uh, was the son, and mom always talked so highly of them. They were Turkish, and we lived in, in the, mm, I think, the second floor of their 
big apartment kind of building, which one of the funny stories or crazy stories was the water would get turned off at 4 a.m. I mean, get turned off. So at 4 a.m., my mother would get up and fill the bathtub with water so that she would have water for the day Wow! to help take care of the needs of the day. Yeah. Water and uh, anyway, it was quite an adventure, some learning. And so I always had the, the idea that I wanted to go back, so I did when I was uh, – graduated out of high school Love so that. you so my background is i'm just saying no no that's no, great that gives it great because it's you're like you said you were you were in turkey for six weeks you were born in turkey yeah but as far as someone said to you where are you from <laughs> yeah well, how, how do you answer that question as a well, military brat <laughs> as a military brat my my grandparents were from the bronx they lived in my my well, parents, parents grew up in the bronx yeah. and new, new, in new york city and so my parent, my grandparents still lived there. So we would go back for all the holidays. And my dad's grandmother, my dad's mother would also live. She lived in New Jersey, right over the, the, the bridge. bridge. So we would go there either or one holiday or the other, or we were there very often. And uh, we had a wonderful time thinking that that was our home place Mm -hmm. so when somebody would ask me I would say I was from New York and of course my cousins let me know oh no you are not (laughs) (laughs) you are not a New Yorker Um, we we lived in Texas and we lived in um, Colorado and Virginia and Maryland we lived in New York we lived at West Point well, that's where my sister was born. I shouldn't say we, I should say they. Um, and then we, our last, and we lived on Okinawa. And then our last uh, place was Maryland. So that's where we ended up. And well, my parents a, loved Maryland. And that is a perfect and transition. As do we. As do we um, that is a perfect transition to dad, because we know Moms, don't make me cry. We know <laughs> Joni. Yeah, that was their favorite the base was Maryland, and that's where she stayed. So that's she's where a Maryland she girl, stayed, and that's today. where Grandma and Grandpa stayed, and that's where yeah, Mom retired. and Dad met. Was in Maryland. Yeah. Um, so no need to explain the how we met yet story, but let's transition to Dad, our OG Marylander. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give us a little background about yourself. Where, okay. So yeah, where are you? From, where did you grow up? Start mm-hmm. there. I grew, I was born, raised, I grew up in Emmitsburg, Maryland. I was actually born in Gettysburg Hospital. It was a local hospital for us. But I was the youngest of seven children who, at the time, I was, when I was born, our family was living with our grandparents on the property where we live now. It was a little tiny log cabin and it didn't dawn on me till years later. How did we all fit in this mm. little cabin? No indoor plumbing. Everything was go back to the spring, carry water, boil water to do our cooking, clean our clothes, to clean ourselves. And it wasn't a very easy lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I was probably only a few months old. Oh, and by the way, my, my dad, he worked at, uh, Mount St. Mary's College, but he didn't have a car. And when I was born and, and I was in the hospital, my mother and I, he would take one of the girls' bicycles, I guess, and ride to Gettysburg. Oh my Stop. God. And see us in the hospital. And then his brother would, you know, meet him at the hospital. He lived in Gettysburg right. with his family, my father's family, and bring him back home. Until we Wait, got out of hospital. and so for that. folks that are not from Emmitsburg, miles, yeah. that's a ten mile to east, Pennsylvania. To yeah. right, that's a ten mile bike ride yeah. at least. Yeah, I would say it's at least ten miles, right? And yeah. then there, the roads were not the same even. No, it right. was for riding. No, it was the, not a great. Yeah, they're not trip. like paid. They're not like paid. There's, There's a no shoulder so extra no. for bikes. Right. Right. Yeah, nor was it like a 2024 Trek weighing one pound bike. Yeah. You know, like anyway, back yeah. to you. So then, you know, when I I couldn't have been any more than maybe six months. I guess we moved out of our grandparents' house, and and because my father worked for Mount St. Mary's, he had the opportunity to uh, move us into an old farm house 
down off Old Frederick Road. And again, it didn't have any indoor plumbing and stuff, but it was a little more room and mm-hmm, it was, mm-hmm. you know, we had access to That was on Mount property? Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. on the Mount property. It didn't have yeah. running water? I didn't know that. No. Well, uh, well, believe it or not, a lot of people, I was born in well, 1955, a lot of people didn't have running water. Well, mm-hmm. people didn't have running air. water in Emmitsburg when we were in school. Yeah. So, but, yeah. we lived there for for quite a few years, and the horrible thing that happened to our family, I was five years old, it was the Saturday after Thanksgiving, we were all there, my oldest sister, Lois, who was, she's 15 years my senior, you know. She was in first year nursing school. We were all there for a nice Thanksgiving. And so we were there. Thanksgiving, Friday, Saturday night, we were all settling down because my sister had to be back down in Baltimore. She was in school at St. Agnes Hospital, nursing school. And so we said goodnight to my father. We all went to bed and everything. When my father came upstairs, he fell over dead of a heart attack. Mm. And that was the blow of the family where my mother and a lot of people and probably even my older sisters who could comprehend death and what it means was a blow that people weren't sure we'd handle and my mother would handle, you know, and it was just devastating, you know. And when she finally talked to someone the next day, the first thing that came out of her mouth, she looked at you know, whoever's talking to her, she told me, she says, how am I ever going to raise three boys without a father? Mm. And up until the day she passed, I would tell her, I said, Mom, you did a pretty good job. Mm-hmm. You know, I had, <laughs> she, she did had, a great job. She did an amazing she, she job. had three, three sons and four daughters. And she just, you know, people actually offered, you know, when my dad passed, said, Kathleen, we don't know how you're going to do it. We'll take in at least the two younger ones mm. and this and that. And mom says, no. No, you're not. These are mine. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. As time went on, she would tell people. They said, Kathleen, how'd, she, how'd you do it? You know, and stuff. She says, well, she said, I had a big family, and they were always around for me, and I was for them. And says, and we all got through it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, not to interrupt. How old were you when Grandpa died? You said Aunt Lois was 15. I was five, mm-hmm. five years old, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people, even even some of my sisters, you know, they were older than me and stuff. Down the road, they'd say, well, you don't remember your father, do you? Daddy, we called him. Mm-hmm. You know? So one day I said, you think I don't remember our father? And he said, you couldn't have. You were only five. I said, okay. What was my nickname? And they all kind of looked around and looked, and, and I said, you remember, you remember a butch? Mm. And then they said, that was my nickname. My father was mm. the only one that would call me butch. Mm. And when he died, butch went away. Nobody mm. ever called me butch again. Mm. So, I'll start, honey. No, that's, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, 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 I'm satisfied on, with this. Bring it back. Yeah. Bring it back. So, and then, you know, I've been in Emmitsburg all my life, and just uh, some good, some bad, but they, for the most part, it was pretty good and mm-hmm. stuff because people really respected our family, my father, my grandfather, and grandmother and stuff, and so... They knew, you know, we weren't, you know, pushovers. We were tough. We mm-hmm. were going we to keep, we were going to make it happen. You mm-hmm. know? Because at that point, like you said, you know, people are, are, you're saying, you know, we were tough. But at that point in Emmitsburg, what is there, one other black family other than you well, guys? There, actually, there were, there, was, there were a lot more black families then and a little bit earlier than they are now. Oh, it, yeah. totally. They, they, yeah. There were a lot of black folks in there, but of course, as time rolled on, you know, and there's, you know, as my one sociology teacher said, you know, it's an economically starved area, you know, you mm-hmm. couldn't, you know, take care of a family on the incomes that we're paying around locally. So a lot of them moved closer to the, either Baltimore or, or uh, even Harrisburg and, and Washington, D.C., so they mm-hmm. could, you know, make decent money to survive. And, uh, right, because the blacks weren't paid. 
didn't have no, the same. No, well, there right. wasn't the same opportunity. Yeah. So it's not to exactly. say that like others that stayed yeah. back, like they just yeah. didn't want to cut it. It was that opportunity yeah. wasn't there for everybody. All right. So okay, so you grew up in Emmitsburg. You were there your whole life. Joni gets to Emmits. Well, yeah. When did you? How when did, did you guys settle in Emmitsburg? Yeah. Uh, 1968. So I was in sixth grade. Okay. okay. And we didn't settle in Emmitsburg. We settled in Blue Ridge Summit. Well, that's yes. That's you and your you. parents. Yes. yes. But yes. we, so but just, I just went across to, the line. Right. Which was, I, I shouldn't even say Blue Ridge Summit. We were in Maryland, Cascade, Cascade Highfield. And so we had to, um, that was on top of the mountain. And that was part of my, my dad and mom's um, excitement about being there because Fort Ritchie was right there. Their base. The Their base. base. Well, it, it really was. When they for had a time access. When, they, when had they, a, had they had access to it. So we could still use the commissary and we could still use the dispensary and the dentist and all of those recreational activities. And then my mom started to work um, at Fort Ritchie. So... Um, so your connection to Emmitsburg was school. Was school. Yes, we, my, my mom did the research and found out that the schools that we were supposed to be going to were in Smithsburg, mm. um, Maryland, which at that time, the high school wasn't an accredited high school. Mm. And my mom knew that, you know, the intent was for us to go to college. And I was in sixth grade, but my brother was in high school and my sister. So they said, wait a minute, we can't have you know this happening that they go to uh, a non-accredited school so they looked into the catholic school and uh, the private school and it was mother seton which was in emmitsburg mm -hmm. and um we my mom actually was the one who pushed and finally got a military bus to take us to school oh, up wow. until then she had to drive Oh, what oh, is wow. it? Like 20 miles? Something like that? Yeah. 20 minute drive up and down the mountain. And back then the weather was, could be very bad. Right. We had a lot of s snow and cold and ice. And uh, so my mom, because my dad would, was working, my mom would drive us and um, pick us up and that kind of thing. And she was the one then that really fought and, and finally got military buses to take us and we did start riding on the St. Rita's bus and that's where I met my best friend um, and I also knew my best friend before that we went to grade school together first grade and second grade because we had lived there and then we went overseas to Okinawa and then we came back um, but I was um, we went I went to Mother Seton first and second grade and then came back in sixth grade so I knew some of the people still mm -hmm. And um, my dear friend Barbie was on the St. Rita's bus. And then I met my friend Colleen, who was also on the St. Rita's bus. But I also already knew some of the other people, Linny, and who are from still our yeah. from previous first and second grade. So Your we came back and we girls. got to meet back up to them with them and Diane. And we all became and still are. The Seton Girls. The Seton Girls. Seton Girls. Seton Girls. <laughs> Betsy. Betsy. <laughs> so then, so you went to Mother Seton. Dad, you also went to Mother Seton. I did. I went to Mother Seton. And you know, I know your mother doesn't like the fact that I didn't, I didn't know her in, in grade school. <laughs> Daddy okay, was in, so. in eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. in six. Two, okay. He two, was two, two, two grades but, apart. Yeah. He was... You know, he was like the you know the oldest in the school. He was the guy on campus that it, you know their class had a really fun group of guys. So of course we all were aware of them. They weren't so much aware of us. <laughs> we were little. But were you aware of each other? Well, Dad, so I didn't mean to cut you off. You you go ahead. I was just well, you know, like I say, I went to Mother Seaton and everything. And and at, at the time we were we were we were boys that grew up in the country we were surrounded by our buddies and all we were interested in for the most part were sports hunting and fishing yeah you know and 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 keeping our grades up so our parents wouldn't be on us and make us come in you know when we should be out playing and carrying on but uh it, it, it was it was a 
pretty good time. Other than, than uh, when I was in fourth grade, they said that I had uh, a little bit of, of uh, I guess, behavior problems because if somebody you know got a little too fussy with me, guess what? It's time to throw down. And, and, <laughs> That's right. And I never, I forgot about it until I ran into an old friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. There were about four or five of us that year in fourth grade that got kept back. Oh, I said, wow. yeah, you think they, they wouldn't yeah. keep you all back together? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. Well, I guess we were the bruisers and they were going to, you know, get us away from the other class and oh, tone us God. down a notch or two. Oh, but, wow. That's funny. Uh, and that. and then long story short, all those bruisers turned out to be pretty good people, you know. Well, they, they say that the best friends and bad and so. kids end up being the most yeah. successful. Right. So. Wait, so you then were in were you in eighth and mom was in sixth, or were you in seventh? Seventh and two mom years was in, older and one yeah, grade. One grade, I, one grade right. I yeah. was oh, so seventh. you were in seventh. Right. Well, I didn't know who you were until eighth. Honey. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, so after high school or after middle school, middle school, you both then go to the same high school. Yes. yes. The local parochial high school. Which is no longer. St. Joseph's, which is now no apartments. longer. And very many people always wish that there was a high school still, but it's not. But we had a, it was, talk about a local high school. We had a high school of 125. Oh my God. Total. Total. Wow. So do you knew each other in high school then? So that's when we got to know each other. (laughs) Wow. We knew each other in high school. But again, Richard was the athlete and quite an athlete, not just because it was a small high school, because he was an athlete with all his buddies all those years. So he was, again, well-known by everyone in the neighborhood and then in the area and in the school and the county. (laughs) for his athleticism, and uh, so we all just became friends. 125 people, we had 25 in our, we graduated 24 from our class, and we started out with like 30, I think, and your class had about the same, I think, yeah, 25 like or that. so. Yeah. So, you know, small we just, school, very it was small. very small yeah. school, and we just, after school, there were, you know, we didn't have a lot to do. Girls, I started playing basketball, but before that, we didn't even have sports for, for women. Right. Yeah. You know, you played. We had. Baseball, Little League. Base, right. Baseball and, and uh, yeah. basketball. It's always. They came back. Well, St. Joe's had baseball and basketball years ago, and then they cut out the baseball program. There wasn't enough interest, I guess. Oh, my gosh. Hmm. And then when I was a freshman, I guess, then they started it back up because they -hmm. they had some seminarians, or not seminarians, some some Mount students that were like, uh, you know. Student teachers or something? Yeah, Yeah. and they said, well, you know, we'd we'd like to find out who'd be interested in – Playing baseball, so of course, also great. You know, we hadn't played baseball since little league. A bunch of us, we just yeah. thought that was the greatest thing since sliced bread. To get the opportunity to play baseball again. Yeah, so they started the baseball team, yeah. and yeah, then it's like the and same then, age group. You guys are freshmen, and your same good yeah. crew from little league then comes to high school together. And it it was funny because they hadn't played baseball in at the school in, in probably ten years at least. Hmm. So. Hmm. When we have practices, and they say, "Well, what are we going to do for uniforms?" No, oh my they god! They dug out the old uniforms, and of course, they were uniforms like you know they wore in the nineteen oh fifties, big baggy <laughs> pants, and so. Oh, we well, love her to get that. My story, like I say, one of one of one of my other moms, Mrs. Adelsberger, took all these uniforms, and she. Took them home and cut and sewed, and you know, yeah. This is a that's uh, so cute. And because I remember my my uniform, the pants weren't quite finished for the first game, and I was playing third base at St. John's Prospect Hall, playing against them. And I can remember it was a windy day, and I'm playing third base, and it was like you could hear the flags flapping, (laughs) these big old baggy (laughs) pants and stuff. Yeah. Oh, my God. It is hilarious that that was every day. Well, you know. Like a newsies look baseball, you know, like, come on, boys. Oh, my God. So did anyone – so that was freshman year, and then you guys – so you played four years. You had varsity I played three years. My my junior year, uh, I had a little – uh, falling out with my then 
coach for basketball, Bob Custer, it was his first year there, and he was coaching the baseball team. So I didn't. I said, I'm not playing. You know, that's it. I'm I'm done. You know, I've had enough. You know, he he was he, he was he was tough. He was stern. You know, yeah. to put it politely. So wouldn't have he was a today. Philly boy. Yeah. So mm. I came back and played my senior year because you know I felt bad. I let my some some of my buddies down. You know, for not playing that year. So I came back my senior year. And we won the Tore it up. we won our conference and we had a lot of fun doing it because we played some teams in Frederick County at the time that people didn't want to play a, a, a school that only had 120 students because they they're, thought you'd they're, be a they said, we have nothing to gain by playing mm-hmm. these guys so some people picked us up thinking we'd be a little patsy for them you know mm-hmm. an easy win. And when we stuck it to them, you know, it was a different story, you know. And it wasn't just in baseball. It was basketball, soccer. Yeah, basketball, too. It was always. And then the, the girls. The girls were good. Did it, too. We, we, had, we had a really great star on our basketball team. None of us had ever played before. And, uh, but Linny had learned how to shoot and was amazing at it. And uh, we were the team. She, we all, we all were good defenders and good stealers, <laughs> but she was the shooter. And uh, we had a wonderful time. We played for four years. And then, but we only had, at that time, when I, as a freshman, we only had basketball. And, um, and then they started soccer, I think, when I was a, a junior, maybe, maybe a sophomore. They begged me to play, but. I couldn't. I was too busy. <laughs> but one of the funny stories, talking about uniforms, when we came in, the women's uniforms that we had were um, a jumper, but it was short, and it was white. Our school colors were green and white. Was it like white. a skort? It was, no, we had bloomers. Oh, my, oh my God. God. It was a jumper that came over, and then it had snaps on the side, and it would, the snaps would, you'd snap it, and that was green pleated. I mean, they were made really well. They were adorable. They were white, and it, but they weren't they like were heavy, heavy hell, comfortable. Was weird. To and no sports bras then. No sport, nothing. Oh my God. And my mom, again, she was like, this is crazy. These girls can't keep it. They, we called them our maternity tops. That's what they looked like. Oh my God. And uh, these girls can't play in these. And she, they said, well, there's no money for the girls. Mm. So we had sub sales, and <sighs> we had to raise our own money, and then we, we got... Did Grandma organize the sub sale? Oh, of course she did. Grandma and Grandpa, you know, and it would be... Grandma would be like, I'll get all the food, and you got to come in. We had to put... We made our own... We made the oh subs. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> had, we had to go out and you get the orders. started sub sales. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so did you buy fresh, like, brand new uniforms, or was it, like, buy the cloth and make uniforms? No, or? we bought brand new uniforms. Oh, okay. They were green polyester shorts and tops. Cute. Shirts. Mm-hmm. We were so proud of our... And the guys still were playing shorts. in the baseball pants. Guys were still playing <laughs> in the <laughs> 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 I think so when Bob get, Puster came... We did get new uniforms, yeah. Yeah. The athletic... Did sale? Uh, well, we did some. They uh, did do some. Sales. Okay, I so, thought you were going to say no, we did. These cookies better been out there. Car washes, car washes okay. were big things back in those days. Because but the athletic department, yeah. there was a certain, you know, like the PTA and the athletics. They would put so much money towards the athletic department, and it was all set aside for the boys. Mm-hmm. Of and so the boys were getting their new uniforms because of the baseball needed them and all that. But oh no, the girls, you know. So, we'll get like you I a said, thread for that was Homec. that was Grandma. She well, she jumped in there. So with that too, with the boys, like you're saying, which we're not surprised by because given the times, yeah. still, but yes, that, nineteen. The boys are four two. Yeah, because three. I was going to say, when did you graduate high school? Seventy four. Seventy four. Seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah. yeah. So it's also did anybody on your team go collegiate sports out of this little school? No. Uh, well. Uh, Basketball wise, you know, Rudy wasn't your brother. He had an opportunity, but yeah. you know, back then, it, and again, he would have been the first black basketball player to play for Randolph Macon College mm. wow. down in Virginia. Mm-hmm. And that he had the opportunity, and he thought about it, and he says, "You know, I, I, that I I just can't do it." But on the other hand, you know, I had. Uh, can't because it was going away from home and being oh, only yeah. black yeah. person we, on the we had team. Never, you know, I, yeah, I mean, he was like, no, it was more no, going no. away from home. Yeah. Going away from home. Yeah. yeah. 
when uh, the cost he had responsibility. Yeah. I the furthest I had ever been away from Emmitsburg when through my high school years, I guess, was to uh, the Eastern Shore to play in a basketball tournament mm. of Maryland. Yeah, mm. Maryland. Yeah, yeah. it. Uh, you know. We didn't go too far. Right. You yeah. Know. And, you know, and his you defense said, isn't even the word, but. Um, well, you also had offers to play basketball right. at yeah, colleges. Well, well, I had, I had a lot of offers that I never received until right. I graduated and was out of school. And then some, my former coach, Bob Custer, you know, who we became, he became pretty good friends my senior year and stuff. And he, I was actually at Frederick Community College and. Things weren't going right there. And he says, Richie, he says, you need to come in and see me and go up to the counselor's office at St. Joe's. I said, Bob, what for? You know, you know, I, I wasn't really pleased with the, with the school. At, at things, different things were at handled. At FCC, you mean? Yeah, at FCC and St. Joe's. Yeah. So I go back, you know, I get off class and go up to, walk up to the high school and I go to the counselor's office and says, here, is this for you? And so they hand me an envelope, you know. So what's in this thing? So I say, okay, thank you, you know, walk out. Here were these about 15 letters from schools and coaches that I never received. I should have received them at the end of my senior year. No later, at probably the start, yeah, the right. beginning of my senior year. I said, well, too late now, you know. The only one that, that, that kept an open door that I had an opportunity to, to go back when, when things fell short for me at FCC was to play at uh, Lincoln University in Philadelphia. And I went up there, and, I mean, it was, you know, a small school, but they had a, a nice facility, and, and they say, well, we can't give you a full-ride basketball, but uh, Bob Custer says you can hit a baseball and throw a baseball. I said, yeah, I can, I can play a little baseball. So, and actually, uh, the coach's name was uh, Williams. Uh, he had the same name as the, the, the quarterback for the Redskins. Doug Williams? Doug Williams, yeah. Doug Williams was his name. So he takes me over to this new facility they built for baseball, and they, they were in there working out, so – you know, like, uh, grab a bat and just swing some and this and that. And I was ripping this ball, ripping this ball. <laughs> and he he finally says, okay, I see enough. He says, and he talked to Custer. He says, Bob, he says, he doesn't belong here. He says, you need to, and he gave him a name. He says, this is a guy that could play professional baseball. Mm-hmm. Just what he's seen for swinging a bat. So Custer said, when he gets me back home, coming down there, he says, Richie, he says, I don't know if you want to do it. He says, it's a lot of work and you can do it. He says, you can have a tryout with Pittsburgh. It's an open door thing. Go to Pittsburgh Pirates camp. I said, Bob, oh, man, I said, you know, I'm just daunted by this, you know, because. <laughs> yeah. Too far from home. You were like, I, I was said, just. Far yeah. from home. And, you know, I knew Pittsburgh at the time. They were a powerful team. I said, man, I know what it is to, you know, from just hearing and reading about the, the minor league system. I said, I'm not going to get on a bus and ride up and down the East Coast. And I said, I'm sorry, Bob. He said, you got to do it. I said, oh, I'm dead. Oh, my God. Every no. coach is like, this is no. my dream. Yeah. And they're like, are you kidding no. me? I could have a boy that could go pro. Well, no. and, you know, oh, so go ahead. Going back from the start of our conversation, everything would always go back to my mother. You know, and at the time, my sister – my youngest sister, she was at nursing school only in Frederick, but it was far away. She was living away from home. I was the only one here, home, and I said, man, I, you know, I just can't leave mom, you know. Yeah. Mom's mom, I said. Yeah. You know, she's. And she also didn't she, drive. She, and she like, gave me yeah, she didn't have a car. And anything that I've accomplished to this point and stuff, she did it for me. Mm-hmm. Like, before there was truly a, uh, a definition for it, but, you know, I believe I'm dyslexic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she, you know, they said, oh, you know, it's a hard time of reading, you know, but yet I could go to math class and do all this crazy stuff as a young age. Without, and, and, without 
a calculator and, and without and my writing mother, it down she mm-hmm. took in the head. Me yeah. and she would sit down at the dining room table as soon as I came in, you know, from school. She says, well, let's go. It says time to go to work. And she would, you know, run through phonics and this and that. And, and just, well, and the interesting thing I basically that learned is, to yeah, read she, memory, memorize words. Yep. Yep. Well, um, interesting. funny that you say that too, because I believe that I, I don't know if I am dyslexic, but certainly I would do the same thing, memorize words for sure. And others a- in our absolutely. family, I won't name them, but, but they my, know. But the, what I was going to jump in and say was, yeah. you know, for those that don't understand is that grandma was only allowed to receive an eighth grade education. Yep. So how incredible that she was teaching, like teachers came and said, he's got a problem. And it was the woman with the eighth grade education right. that was like, well, yep. let me teach him. Right. Right. Um, you know, and that not to get off on a tangent, but we've talked about this yeah. before as the, the confidence and resiliency of black right. women, right. You know, a black mom's going to figure out how to do that. But so I get your, I get the, not wanting to go to Pittsburgh, especially in those, there's no connection. You, yeah, you would have been writing her letters. You've been writing her letters. The season yeah. not seeing your so friends. Long. Yeah, you didn't have a phone. You would have had a right. nine months without probably yeah. even a call. Yeah, her. you would, like you're saying, you're like all over the place with this with the minor league teams. You're like yeah. you don't know where you're gonna. Well, be. and and with that, if you had done that, would we be here? Because Joni <laughs> was there. She was, was there. I was going so you weren't. Yeah. You graduate. You were a year apart in school. But were you dating in high school? No. 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 So we when, were, did we were, when did you start dating? We were dating? good friends. We we had some mutual friends. Daddy's mutual friends. The guy friends were my friends. And my girlfriends were his friends. So we just all had a good time together. We would, you know, we'd go out on Friday nights as a group. Right. And, or Saturday and have, you know, we just had fun. We had a lot of fun getting to know each other <laughs> And just laughing, we were always having good times. So, how old were you when you like started dating? Well, all of the kids, which is kind of funny, all of our friends went off to college. I stayed home and went to college at the local community college because I just didn't know what I wanted to do before I graduated. She went to Hagerstown. I went to Hagerstown, um, and I didn't decide I wanted to become a nurse until my end of my senior year really it was very late in my senior year so in high school of high school school, of high school oh high school and so then at that time you um had to sign up you didn't you know you to you waited it was a waiting list Mm -hmm. you had to pass all the tests you had to get into the school but then there was a waiting list so I had signed up late so it was a waiting list to get in so I went to school I went to college I started going to school but I also worked and then all of our mutual friends that we all hung out with went off to college away Mm -hmm. they went you know to different schools predominantly most of them some of them were still at home but most of our really good friends had gone off and you stayed home, and then I stayed home, and we were like, what are you doing Friday night? And I'm yeah. like, I don't know. You want to go to a movie? Daddy was like, let's go to a movie. <laughs> so who asked who first? She asked me out. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> right here first. Take the reins, I ladies. said, what don't are you hesitate. doing Friday night? And let's do something. So we went, and what was our first? Um, oh, our first- Carrie. No, 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 no. Oh, Marathon God, Man, so remember? Oh, Mar- oh, right, right, right. Yeah, Dustin Hoffman, yeah. Dustin Hoffman. Oh, it God. was intense. Oh, my God. It was, we were sitting there, and I think I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> we, were, we were both having, you know, because we- It's a movie everybody's got to see at least once. Yeah. <laughs> Dustin yeah, Hoffman. I've never seen that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Marathon he gets man tortured, with Dustin Hoffman. and they, and they drill in his Olivier. tooth. Oh, God. To, yeah. Okay. And it was very one intense. I can't wait to watch. <laughs> well, um, put it this way. Neither of us ever forgot it. I'm a rom-com. Carrie was- one of our funny second or third yeah. ones. Daddy forgot, you know, we didn't, we were getting ready to leave the theater and then the hand comes up and you don't uh, realize. Grave, yeah. <laughs> and, and Daddy had a jacket and he was getting ready to put it on. And he throws yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were just, I was like, oh so. my gosh. But anyway, that was. So that's like when you're 18, 19, yeah. out of, fresh out of school. And then how long did, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty. What year was that? Because it would have been when I was nine, graduated. So you would have been nine, maybe almost 20. 20, 20 close. Because I was working for, for Allegheny Because we Powell dated for then, five right? years. So I got married when I was 25. So 
Yeah, I was working for Allegheny Power. Yeah, and, you and had at started, the time. So, yeah, you were like, yeah. 20, so when I went to work for the power company, the utility company, yeah. I mean, it was at the time where uh, they were really trying to upgrade the whole grid, you know, mm. across the nation and stuff. And we worked and worked. And we, we I was working 10 hour days to start with. But 10 hour days, a lot of times, you know, you work four tens and then storms would roll in and you didn't know when you'd get off. Mm. You just Were they union getting. then? I came, when I came to work there, they had finally got the union in the Frederick nice. shop. Mm, nice. And even when the union came, because the contract wasn't totally, you know, etched in stone and writing, so they, the company would just, you know, we were only supposed to work 16 hour mm, days mm-hmm. at the most and get eight That's off. Insane. Like I say, I can remember the last time that the the Pittsburgh Steelers played the uh, Dallas Cowboys for in the Super Bowl for a championship. Myself and another fellow, we worked from Friday or Saturday one o'clock in the morning, and never got home till Monday at eight o'clock. We ate, worked, slept in the truck because an ice storm had hit the East Coast. Oh my Jeez. God! And that was and then you we actually got eight hours. Driving sleep and they had to go back in and we were it was miserable but, but you didn't. actually started working for the power company we were already dating because you That's were working at the Emmett yeah he, because you would have been 20 yeah then. you, were, oh, you was, worked yeah. at the Emmett house for five years you would have, yeah. So yeah you guys were kind of like it was yeah. i was 21 went to work for the company yeah and yeah. i so, so we started dating like before that when yeah. you were like 20 yeah. yeah we started dating before you actually worked for the power so you dated five how many years before you got married five years five years okay so it's yeah <laughs> I'm going to say daddy would work those crazy hours and I would generally drive to him his part of the country because he was crazy driving crazy tired and everything he was always uh, awake enough <laughs> that we could you know that we would meet up and still have your part of the country so you were still living in Blue Ridge Summit right. yeah I yes and then, I so you were driving down to Emmettsburg yes I would drive off the mountain movie theater yeah. this side and we of would, town yeah well we hung out we we didn't go to the movies I too mean, much like after our first few dates down we, the mountain <laughs> yeah she we, was a mountain girl we had uh <laughs> yeah so when so you got married in 81 what so when you guys get engaged well first of all actually well, back, so up, back up yeah, yeah, yeah. dating We're, life yeah we gotta what's that like at this point in emmitsburg and there's not a lot of interracial relationships but were I you also gather. yeah were you like advertising that yeah, you're, you're like dating friends or were you now it becomes like an organic we're friends there are one of our first times that we kind of let everybody know that we were dating we were at this one of the circles we we used to have Party? Places where we would go and party, and you know, we like were fields to or hang what do you, out. What do you mean was, by circles? It was kind of up in the mountain. Was, they, they were there just were trees trees off the road. We were always or, outside. Or these, what a field party is. Yeah. Yeah. Just to make, it wasn't was really a field party, though. It was up in the mountain, the, the woods, lower part of the mountain. The area where woods, trucks, fires. But all the local young people knew where all these different areas were. And you'd say, Where are you going to be? We'd say, Oh, meet at the circle. Get some birdies and take off, and you eventually find. That. You, you yeah. find, meet at the you old find the, people, yeah. or and if you got tired or that group, say, "Well, let's go see if somebody ride around, yeah, ride around town." Because yeah. yeah. we also double tap your brakes before yeah, yeah, it's, uh, Double tap. Yeah. You had to. You had yeah. to do that. And and so one <laughs> one night we kind of were really enjoying each other's company, and our friends said oh come with us we'll take you for a ride so they're driving we're in the back seat you know and they're they just thought that was hysterical that they were we got them together oh and mm. you guys had already been yeah. on the dl yeah mm. kind of you know we were yeah. we were we were friends right mm-hmm. right that was kind of our first that was yeah. sidel boys Oh, we love that. That's darling. Yeah. Yeah. They were so cute. They were so proud. They'd love to tell us that whenever they would. That's so funny. As we got older and stuff, we were the first ones. We knew you well, guys so obviously should the be Seidel's together. Were, um, we on knew board. you should be together. <laughs> yeah. Was everyone else endorsing the Our relationship? friends didn't care. Everybody knew daddy. This was always my explanation. In yeah. That, in, in Emmitsburg. He wasn't a stranger. You're he wasn't a town. stranger. Everyone respected him and his family and appreciated them. 
and you know they would see me and it was you know even though I was not from Emmitsburg they kind of you know had seen us over the years school with, with our group of friends and school and so you know and and like I said we didn't make it like big public yeah. when we first started right dating we we didn't always you know we went up in the we didn't always stay yeah you're like it's different a little bit when you're dating we couldn't you know we didn't and appreciate you're young, the little you're hanging out in groups a lot yeah so it's kind of like so people didn't you know and then when we they could tell that we were dating because we were always together mm -hmm. they didn't you know most of them didn't really say a whole lot because we knew all of the people they didn't seem to really care there was yeah. a few yeah that would give us a Side eye, maybe. But when did really. your parents know you? Were I never dating? felt bad about. It. I mean, I was never, I was never that aware. I don't think I was having fun. I yeah. Was, my parents was another thing. Um, my father absolutely loved Richard. I can remember they used to, they used to, um, uh, what do you call it when uh, they were always the chaperones mm, at yeah, the dances at the yeah, school very, and high school and everything. And of course, everybody knew Richard because he was the athlete and um, they all were, you know, grandpa was an athlete. He loved that, but he, he, they would chaperone the dances mm. in at school. And up until then, you know, the nuns were the chaperones and they'd have their yardstick, you oh know, their God. ruler, ruler, ruler. their ruler, ruler, you know, 12 inches stay Make apart kind Jesus. of thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so when our parents started, it, people were happy because they mm. were they were over there, mm. you know, were grandpa, you he's over there drinking <laughs> yeah, the tea sitting. and yeah. having some snacks and talking to everybody, right. making sure everybody was having fun. And I can remember... Um, and this is, like I said, we were in high school. We weren't dating. We were just friends. And I remember him coming home saying, man, I wish more people were like that Richard Williams. I was like, what? Oh, good. You know? Mm. He says, he stayed and helped put the chairs away. He helped clean mm -hmm. up. You know, he was the, the one. Those other guys, you know, you have to be You have to watch them. And, you know, didn't have to watch Richard, you know. So he, he was totally aware but I don't, I'm not even really sure why we didn't come out of, we didn't, we really didn't come to either of our families. Yeah. We didn't well, say While you were that. dating. You While we were dating. dating. Yeah. We were dating and, and it was, I always was going off the mountain. Yeah. You weren't, you know, coming, yeah, I, that like, was kind of always the thing that I drove down and, I mean, I didn't get home till two and three in the morning, many, many mornings. And but it was never question. They were just say, "Well, you, what were you doing? You know, having fun? Yeah, you know, yeah, just right." And I don't know. I don't know why we didn't. Dad probably was. Mom and Dad were always their their line was always, you know, we we worry if you if you are end up marrying Richard or somebody. Not they wouldn't say Richard. Um, you have to worry about the kids and what's going to happen, you know, what their life's going to be like and how are they going to be treated? Mm -hmm. And, um, I was just like, you know, did you think their reaction was different because like they were not from Emmitsburg, you know, like grandma and grandpa growing up in the Bronx yeah. versus and having there, seen the world too. And like, like there was, you know, like, well, you know, the, the was, part of growing up in the Bronx Everybody thinks, oh, it's a big city. Everybody's, you know, at mesh or whatever. Every neighborhood, the Italians, the Irish, the Germans, uh, the blacks, the Spanish, everybody lived in their own little communities mm -hmm. and in their own neighborhoods. Even though, you know, it might be a five-block radius, that was their community. And you didn't live there if you weren't that nationality or whatever and so my father's mother died my father's father died um, when he was five so his mother was poor she was raising five children basically the same didn't have a lot of money and she would always live on the edge of the italian community right on the line or right in the neighborhood because 
was cheaper. She could afford it. It was, it. Mm-hmm. it was cheaper. And they always lived on the higher level story floors, maybe the eighth floor or what, 10th floor, because it was cheaper. Mm-hmm. There were no elevators. You right, walked. Right, so walk up. So, and then my mother lived in the Irish neighborhood. So that's, you know, so they had interactions with all these. My mother was shocked when she left New York with my father on their, in a, on their honeymoon on a bus. They stopped in Pennsylvania, and it was the first time that it hit her in the face. There was a blacks-only, whites-only drinking fountain at mm. the bus stop in Pennsylvania. She's like, what? What happened here? You know, because that wasn't New York, even though you, you kind of, you know, you were... It was, in, it was, more, it was more community segregation or, or than it was especially in the neighborhoods where you're living, like you're saying, in the Bronx, where it's like black, well, and even, Italian, yeah, versus even, like your downtown Manhattan, maybe, in some establishments that were... But it yeah, was always... That's actually, I'm curious. I guess it was kind of always, it's okay for them. Right. But it's not okay if you bring it into the family always. Right. Now, my uncle married an Italian woman. And, you know, there was apparently some grief there by mm-hmm. both sides of the family, the Italians and also, you know. And, and the Irish, you're saying. The Irish. Mm-hmm. Well, more that it was more, yeah, my, you know, that, that my uncle who was Irish married an Italian mm-hmm. woman. Um, so that was, it was certainly not But then not there was also your other uncle married a Puerto Rican woman. Uncle, his brother married a Puerto Rican woman. And I, I don't remember because he was younger. I think it was kind of like, oh, well, we already did this. We already went with through the it. Italian. And it's, fine. Right. it's okay. I don't remember a big deal at all with with my uncle and aunt. But um, they ended up moving back to Puerto Rico. Right. Um, so for when so when you're dating, then so grandma and grandpa, your side, so, your side, mom were yeah, like, yeah. We just it was more. I think it was more like it me wasn't wanting a, my independence. I didn't want yeah, them which is to be normal. like, like oh, why would you bring him to age, dinner? Yeah, age. if you're not yeah. dating, like it, I was the difference 18. of dating at home where you guys are both living at home, like yeah, you're yeah, going, that's very different. You're hang, and you still have friends we were there, friends. yeah. Versus like, oh, I have to and yeah, and at I, that age too. I didn't want it to. Like, ch- I didn't uh-huh. want what we already had to change. Right, right. That you didn't need outside influence. Yeah, into your I didn't need making. to have. Oh, this weekend, come to dinner. You know, because you know, grandma and grandpa, I'd be like every minute. Yeah, right. why, why doesn't Richard, why isn't Richard for, here for yeah. Christmas? My yeah. dad would have loved it. You know, right. having well, someone there. So then, Dad, what what was yeah, grandma's. Williams's reaction, or did she was the and same did she situation? Also not know, same she all not thing. know, but you were down in Emmitsburg, well, so yeah. Well, and of course, you know, she eventually <laughs> rented an apartment above Paul's. Mom Spitz did, and, yeah, I did. Yeah. Mom, yeah, yeah. And so well, look when started. I started to work, yeah, she knew we were seeing each other, you know, but you know, just out of respect and knowing what all she's been through in her life with regards to race relations, you know, and things were getting better. But uh, we didn't push the, the buttons. Go well, ahead. Sorry. The thing was, when I was born, and and then um, as I was five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, at different times, my mother would would talk about this poor little black boy who was visiting somebody in the south, and he had gotten mm. killed, and and it never clicked mm. until all of a sudden, you know, I was probably in my twenties when I said, "Wait a minute." Emmett Till, you know, he did. Mm. Said, that's the kid. Wow. And that's the person. Wow. You know, and then I talked to mom and she says, yeah, she says it was terrible. And then when we had, you know, to go read about it, see about it, the newspaper articles, it was, you know, and she, she was so afraid that my brothers or I, you know, having a relation, you know, with a white person that it may happen though. Trigger that. It right. Mm-hmm. Then it because could happen here. And she was she was really concerned about us, you know. Not in a bad way, but Yeah, safety. And a mother is in a safety, safety survival. Survival. Same same it, thing. It, that and black it's kind moms of funny because of that wasn't exactly <laughs> that wasn't in my parents' thoughts. It right. was the, the offspring next generation because that's the thing you well, were right because it's the funny? same reaction yeah, they're already right. thinking yeah. of the what are they going to go next, through the right. safety yeah. for them they weren't worried about us like, you're white you can blend handle in. it yeah. 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 well mm-hmm. the thing was you know even, you funny. know when your when your grandmother you know joan's mom pat you know 
when she was, you know, not long to live. And, and I'd be up there sometimes, you know, because I'd go up and always take meals when Joan was still working and stuff. And, and she was talking to me one day, and all of a sudden she just says, you know, I wanted nothing to do with that, <laughs> you know, about our relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, and she was saying how her parents had told her, you know, don't ever step outside, you know, your race, your race you know, yeah. and this and that. And, blah, blah. and I just sat there and, and listened to it, you know. I thought, well, she's being honest and she's getting it off her her chest, yeah. so to speak, finally and stuff. But at the same token, I'm sitting there thinking. But she also apologized. Yeah, she did. She apologized for feeling that way right. because she was so so wrong. And I never said That's a word to said. her, you know. She apologized. She, I was almost ready to say a few things, you know, not in a bad way, but. Just respond. Yeah. And when she apologized, I said, "No, this this is good. This is this is a good, you know." She her. needed that, yeah, because yeah, she. That, I mean, we were saying this not too. Not that there was ever right, because I, I almost said, "Pat, why didn't you ask?" And she would probably say, "Ask what?" I said, "You know, because some of my ancestries, you know, are white." I said, I have cousins that have been interracial marriages for years and years and years. And mm. I said, some friends, I said, they got along fine. You know, anything that happened to them that was negative, it, it was right. generally something Outside stupid. Outside the relationship. Yeah, right. And that's where I think, because like grandma, we were talking about this, Morgan and I, um, the other day, that same thing where grandma would always, towards the end of her life, Grandma Muir, she would randomly, you know, when... I was I always told your parents, you know, we worry about your kids, but were she would was worried before we were even born of like how people would treat us, and she was always apologetic about having that. I'm like, Grandma, it's not something you even need to yeah. apologize well, to me for. Well, because you're also, worried about safety. But Grandpa's line was always, "Once you're married, you're married," and I'm not. We're Catholic. I want to say, <laughs> no, 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 no. He said, "I'm going to say what I want to say now." and let you know my concerns. And it was, like I said, it was generally the safety in that. And he said, I'm, I'm going to say what I want to say, but once you're married, you're married, and I, it's, I will never say it again. Mm. And he truly never Res- did. Respect. Mm. He no. always just absolutely was, yeah. and mom too, and your mom, you know, I mean, your mom, tell the story, honey. Well, why don't you find somebody, I, I wouldn't mind if it was, go ahead. What? Yeah, what, did, what was Grandma Williams' Your mom, reaction? <laughs> she always said, why don't you find somebody like that, Joan Muir? I, uh, I love her. Be honest. Uh, Come on. Yeah. No, well, my mom and your mom and my dad, they were, they were friends uh, mm-hmm. from school because of the PTA. the PTA and doing the bazaars and helping. Mom loves to tell the story of helping Mrs. Williams peeling apples and making apple pies for the bazaars at People would buy before they even got in the door because they were, <laughs> they were so like making a good. pre-order. They'd come in and they'd be like, where are the pies? Well, they all got sold as soon as we walked in the door. You know? <laughs> Mom, the, she would tell the story. We'd have to go back and I'd be peeling more po- apples so we could make more because they were already gone because everybody knew how good those pies were going to be. But, yeah, they were friends too. Yeah, so it was Grandma's Williams' Well, Mom, ranch. you know, like I say, Joan had, had moved into an apartment down there and she mom knew I was spending a lot of time down there and stuff and, <laughs> yeah. and so one day you know mom was a person who was just you never knew what was going on and all of a sudden she's she just blurt things out and and uh I guess I came home from work and I was leaving going out and and she says Richard she says you know, I think you ought to marry that girl or, 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 or cut it off. Says, don't keep leading somebody on. And how long had you Wait, been dating? Yeah, how at this long point? you been dating? What, what oh, was this? Four and a half years. <laughs> mm, okay. Four, and four like, years. And so, Thank you. Okay. So, there were a couple of people that were uh, a lot of Richard's buddies. They, uh-huh. When, so, you, so when what are you going to marry her? her? What was yeah. your reaction when she said that? Mm-hmm. I said, well, Mom, I'm heading on down to the liquor store to get some beer. <laughs> <laughs> Mom lived above a liquor store. If I'm for those of you. <laughs> mind, mind your business. Yeah. They're like, Richard, you was a great spot. Store it, was a great spot. Yeah. it was a great spot. It was a great spot. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> so did you, after Grandma made that comment, were you like, okay, I have Mom's blessing, 
I'm going to ask for Joe's I guess hand. that's why we got engaged at Christmas. What'd she say in November? And then you said, I better listen to my mama. Yeah. We got guess, engaged yeah. in December. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess we were engaged for about an, a year, close to a year. Mm. Just December to. So, yeah. So, what year? No, you six were engaged. Months. Six months. En- engaged for a year. And then you actually six get months. married. Six months. You actually get married what year? Is it? 81. 81. And so, but, in a, well, Maybe you're, I was just going to say to to no, keep going. kind of ground us in interracial marriage wasn't even legal in Maryland until what sixty nine sixty nine so and you, you were, were born talking, in fifty five dad yeah and then you were saying like when Grandma Williams is making the story about Emmett Till yeah do you remember you you're, what age were you thinking around that time I, I mean like we did that Google was it, so. yeah Emmett Till yeah That's probably fifty. I think and that was, was when he was born. I was born in 55. I think he had gotten killed a year or two before that. Yeah, so this is so and this so, is really for, you know, grandma's, oh yeah. this is all real, yeah, it was very fresh. It ingrained in her yeah. mind, you know. And obviously she, where she yeah. came yeah, from. Yeah, because for those who don't know the story of Emmett Till, Emmett Till was brutally beaten, hanged, all the things. And they actually found his body submerged in water, right? Mm-hmm. After they accused him of whistling at a, or that he whistled at a white woman. Mm-hmm. And this was in the South. This he was, was visiting Al- his cousins yeah. from she, Chicago. I think he was from Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right. And was visiting down South. It was Mississippi or Alabama, something mm-hmm. like that. And, and um, it all turned out to be yeah. a lie. Yeah. 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 It, uh, and then his mother allowed the body to, to be, be open seen. casket it was an open cast so everyone's new. yeah and, and the, so everyone it became it was in the newspaper right. it was in There's magazines a, it was. his body yeah right. and there's it still a really good know, exhibit at horrible. the american after american history this Museum. was a sharp looking young man i mean just a pre- absolutely handsome and they just tortured and beat this boy up you know he, he'd look you hate to say it he was like a monster yeah you know? mm-hmm. yeah so, well and his mother had been worried about to let him go down yes, there totally. and so it was a very mm-hmm. i add that because he was very aware you need to look and act a certain way you know just to yeah. of exactly the kind the conditions we're living in yeah so but i go back to that though of this just is kind still, of marking even time though, yes we're you know you guys are living in a in a town where people know you but still marking time as a whole we're talking you get married 11 12 years after the legalization of interracial marriage after loving yeah mm-hmm. the yeah. yeah in maryland in maryland it was legal. Yeah. yes um yeah and you know what's it didn't hit me until years later um back then you know you didn't order from amazon or whatever you went to the store or you went to the mall mm-hmm. and i can remember we would be walking in the mall and at the time, I it didn't. I didn't even think anything of it. To be honest with you, there was no one else that looked like us mm-hmm. walking in the mall. And it wasn't until, you know, what I guess when you guys were teenagers or whatever, and I started seeing other couples, seeing other seeing other, other interracial, couples. interracial couples, and younger people mm-hmm. that were you know interracial couples. But literally, when we started dating, we there were a few in, in your family who lived in Pennsylvania and that kind of thing, couples, but we didn't see them. And then out in the... Oh, my brother Marty was... Oh, your... Yeah. 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 But even that was but after you guys was after you guys got married, right? When he... Or dating other people. He was married he, previously. He, and right. Yes. But... It's not like we saw them. It wasn't like we saw... I mean, They're not did. in your group. They weren't... Yeah. Right. And they were... And he was that much older... And, but when we were out in the community, I mean, you know, out in going to the city, Frederick even, or you you just didn't see interracial couples, never thought anything of it really until later on. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, wow, there's other people that look like us. Dad, were you more aware? Because obviously like mom, you're, he was definitely aware. I can still remember feeling uh, that he was would be watching be careful you know mm-hmm. yeah. not the same in in our town in sure. Emmitsburg because you knew everyone right. oh well you were aware but or not the people not not not, not aware, aware that you had to worry they were coming you could see you know well, you knew right. who to be aware of uh, you may remember i'm not sure if you would but uh when the the clan had a, a 
a membership ship drive. Oh, she, they, she and remembers. They, and came to Emmitsburg. Oh, yeah. It was the day of the big Emmitsburg softball tournament we used to have. Mm, I don't know if I do remember this. All over the place. I don't know. Play. Maybe. So we played one game, and so we were going. We went back out to the house, and we knew about what time these guys were supposed to be on the square in Emmitsburg, and and uh, handing out flyers and this and that. So. We load everybody back up in the car and say, well, we're going to ride through town, through the square. So we get into the square. There's nobody on the square. So go down, uh, pulling into Paul's pit stop. I saw some of our guys there. I jumped out and said, hey, I said, where's all the boys at? Frank says, we took care of that. I said, what? <laughs> said, yeah, so they want to come in here and start that for us. Just, we ran them off. Not a, mm-hmm. not a black person among them. They were all the white guys. Yeah, allyship. Yep. yep. Yeah. And that was when this was when we're all alive. Because I don't. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, don't I don't remember, remember that, that one. I remember a different. Little. I remember yeah. a different yeah. attempted Klan rally, but that was in Thermont. Thermont. I remember going to your friend yeah. D's salon and D saying how many people had met up to drive them out of town. That was later on though, because I was yeah, in they elementary did, school. We didn't know that. And because we ran into them, right, until after, right. She but no, told I don't us. remember the Emmitsburg Mm-mm. attempt. Yeah, yeah. but Allyship there were times in, in Emmitsburg where there were a couple, there were a couple little bars around town and stuff where you didn't frequent a whole lot, but you go in there and every now and then somebody would make a remark, not to me or my friend like Ricky Manbrick or somebody else. They wouldn't say it to us. They, right, they'd let it be known to other people in there. Of course, some of the people in there were our right. buddies, exactly. and, and all of a sudden, you know, fights would break out. Yeah, I said, "What's it about this?" Because somebody was bashing the wrong you guys, thing. and we bashed them. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It yep. was, that's how you handle things then. Yeah, <laughs> well, and it's true. It's true, and also, you know, I mean, this is in the days of you think of now with George Floyd's murder and what we've seen with an iPhone. You know, that's oh, the only choice well. that you would have had then because you're not calling anybody. No one's right. jump, no one's going to be there in two minutes to protect you, so you got to do it on your own. But in right. general. In general, because you were in this community in that, community like, that people it knew. It was very much, we, like, knew we us. talked about it. We would hear it in high school. People were like, well, not black like you. It was like, they're safe. We trust them. We know them. Right. Now, a group of strangers rolling into town, maybe Maybe that's not the same folks. reaction. Yeah. yeah. But they, they didn't... Yeah, we didn't feel like that was they, right. It's not and something again, that we were thinking about all the time. That's for sure. Right. It's ignorance, you know. A lot of because, yeah. and it's not just white people; it's black people too. You exactly. don't know people, or don't try to to know people, right. and their their customs, their communities, and stuff. Yes. Uh, and and, and I think everyone's going to seem different if yeah. you and don't I, get to know them. Everyone's I, going yeah. to seem different, and, and I think that so was many commonalities. Right. That was all part of my growing up. And more so me, maybe than my my siblings. I don't know, but we were always in so many different communities, right? Especially, I mean, yeah. you know, for three years when I it was my influential years, I would assume. Um, you know, we lived overseas, yeah, and we didn't Japan. just live on Okinawa. We 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 went all over the Orient. Well, and my I mother made Ma, sure of that, uh, and my dad, right? I remember Grandma too. Like, yes, talking about the travels, and you know, they were. They wanted us culture, but also I remember grandma saying in the Bronx, at least for her family that, I mean, she had, I, it was, was it a Vietnamese or a Korean, Korean friend? Like I remember her distinctly saying, you know, I did have friends that weren't She went to an all girl high school, 800 girls in her senior class, 800. That's insane. That is insane. And they they literally had the biggest auditorium in the city that they would have concerts wow in their school because it was so big and it would hold that many people the people to come for these and her concerts. school was integrated like it was 800 it was right. 800 women yeah of, at all races nationalities wow. and ev- all over the city so blacks too every- blacks too yeah so she was really that would be i would i mean to and think I remember her back to her stories too, like you were saying the story of her talking about after they were married seeing the you know whites only blacks only bathroom um there was other instances of her also being like 
what is happening. You know, people's reactions. Not hearing understanding comments. it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and yeah. standing up and saying yeah. something. My mom was, was um, so appreciative of the world and the communities all around the world that she wanted to see and meet and get to know people and communicate with them. Right. And, you know, my dad was working. He just was going, whatever my mom wanted to do, he was happy as long as he was making people happy, laughing and joking. So they... My, my parents got to know people in Colorado that were of the Indian tribe that used to dance. They would have, you know, they worked, and the kids would do the dancing, too, and they would do the Indian tribal dancings in, in Colorado Springs. Mm-hmm. My mom got to know them, stayed communicating by letters for years, and when we went my brother was born in Colorado, so that would have been in 55. When we went across the country in 68, my mom was still communicating with them. They were now dancing in Disneyland. Wow. My mom had touched base with the mother and said, not they, I shouldn't say they, their son was dancing in Mm. Disneyland and said, whatever his name was, where is he? Oh, he's in Disneyland. We met up with him in Disneyland. (laughs) I love that. Wow, I love that. He danced... We watched, and then he came. It was like we got to go backstage kind of thing. Mm. So, you know, my mom was... Appreciative. She was a connector. Uh, she yeah. was a reader. That is, that is yes. like, one example of, like, hundreds example of a examples hundred. of yes. her staying in touch and thinking back to just, just people like the that Turkish. we knew that would reach out, but even, like, her funeral, her passing. There was all these people that were like, I remember when they drove to this thing. I remember this letter. You, like she was a connector through mm-hmm. and through and through. She didn't and want to miss. Too. She didn't want to miss anything. Miss out. They, yeah, you know, they yeah. definitely had he FOMO. wanted to be the they center of the party. Fear of missing out. Yeah, <laughs> uh, fun. For sure. But just like you're saying, the the part, the the games and playing and doing. You know, my mom had a harder time physically, but she did whatever she right. could um, to play and have right. fun.